So the truth is, students should really begin their career development process in their freshman year, regardless of whether or not they have selected their major. A career is the pattern of work-related experiences and activities over the span of a person's work life. Career development, therefore, is the lifelong process of managing these work experiences through a series of activities and events. In the textbook, we have provided you with a model for working through the career development process. This is not a linear process. It is also something you should not expect to do only once in your life. Cycling through these activities will be necessary in dealing with the changing job market and your future desires to switch careers or advance in your career field, as most working adults will experience at least nine jobs between college and retirement. There are four stages of career development that were introduced in the textbook. The first is assessment. This is taking stock of your personality, interests, values, and skills. In other words, it is asking you to become a self-expert to understand yourself, to know what you are naturally good at and what you desire. A measurement that is often used to help individuals answer some of these questions is the strong interest inventory based on Holland Code's typology. This assessment is not designed to tell you what you should do for the rest of your life or even pinpoint a career for you. Instead, it will allow you to identify common themes between your interests and careers. It does this by comparing your responses to individuals in 130 careers. A job is an extension of who you are. It can allow you a means to express your personality, your strengths, your talents, and interests. So finding out who you are will be beneficial in helping you find your niche. There are, however, some common errors many students make in connecting who they are to careers. Donald Asher, a nationally recognized career advisor, identifies the three main sources of career planning error as confusing what you're good at with what you like to do, thinking you have to get every passion fulfilled at work, and believing that your particular interest or talent needs to be the only thing that you do at work. The next stage in the career development process is exploration. Exploration is discovering your potential career options and narrowing your search. As mentioned in the textbook, you can utilize a few key web resources in doing this. ONET Online provides accessible and detailed occupational descriptions that are useful to students, job seekers, employers, and researchers who are exploring and searching careers. Another site, the Occupational Outlook Handbook, provides information on salaries, working conditions, required training, and projections for the availability of various occupations. You will also want to interact with people in the workforce to add another dimension to what you can learn about available careers. Asking a current professional practicing a career for an informational interview will allow you to get questions answered about what primary responsibilities as well as other duties related to a particular position that you might be involved in. This will help you enhance your awareness of this career. Shadowing is the process of observing an employee in her or his work environment. This will allow you to learn more about a profession firsthand and see aspects of a career that may or may not interest you. The third stage in the career development process is preparation. Preparation allows you to get ready for your career of interest through targeted learning objectives and deliberate opportunities that will help you develop. The goal of this stage is to improve your career readiness. An important skill to develop during the preparation stage is networking. Networking is making contacts within your field in order to help you discover career possibilities and insights. The average American knows 600 people Another important stat is that 30% of all job placements are based off of referrals. Career networking is making the right connections and staying in touch with the people in your field of interest, your friends and your associates, because as you see, it can be very critical. Networking is not the same as looking for a job. 
It can be used to explore careers and to ensure that you have already established relationships before you begin looking for a job. You can network either by contacting professionals outright or by contacting friends and acquaintances who might be able to introduce you to others. Traditionally, these connections have been made face-to-face -face or by telephone. However, today many people also use social networking websites such as LinkedIn to expand their professional network. Internships are another way to prepare for your career. You can take advantage of these temporary opportunities during the summer or the school year. You should consider full-time and part-time prospects, as well as internships that are paid or unpaid. According to Asher, individuals who take advantage of internships during college are more likely to land a job in an industry of choice, more likely to receive job offers at graduation, more likely to receive a higher starting salary, and are more likely to have a job reference and a letter of recommendation. Features of a great internship are an opportunity to work at or above a slightly higher skill level, formalized acculturation program, a clearly assigned supervisor or mentor, exposure to various departments and or functions, and an established channel of consideration for a permanent hire. The final stage of the career development process is execution. Execution is taking intentional action that results in achieved career objectives. Execution is about implementing an action plan and setting both short-term and long-term goals to achieve these objectives. It involves cover letter and resume writing, job searching, and interviewing. All of these processes are necessary for you to obtain the employment opportunity you desire. In order to be most effective, this will take commitment and persistence on your part. It is okay to fail, however, you have to keep active. Finding the right vocation can ultimately create an opportunity for you to contribute to society in a way that is meaningful to you. Be prepared to balance the need to learn the various aspects of your role over time with the readiness to make the contributions you can as quickly as possible. However tempting it may be, it is not sensible for you to base your job satisfaction on how easy it is to perform your job responsibilities. Like college, some of the most exciting rewards can come out of tasks that require hard work and dedication. On the other end of the spectrum, do not be concerned if everything you do is not challenging or stimulating. Sometimes as a new hire, you will be asked to do the things no one else wants to do. Be willing to pay these dues. As you settle in, you will know more and more if a career is right for you. With that, be willing to work diligently to reap the benefits that can come from being in a career you enjoy.